Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, you don't know what the curse is. No idea. Am I immune? To Do I get the curse if I use it? We'll, we'll we'll talk about that when when the curse is upon us. Okay. When we've been struck by the curse of the pharaohs. <laughs> Oh boy. <clears throat> uh, okay, so you've learned about your relics, and uh, yeah, <clears throat> so Cosmode has rejoined your company. He has discovered that there's another one in the temple here who recalls being an architect, and they have effectively rediscovered their guild, uh, much as the Sue Menant have. And uh, Nefer, before you leave. You will also have discovered that. Oh, yes, actually, um, I do remember the priesthood and being in the service of the gods. And um, at this point, because uh, this is sort of like timey wimey floaty uh, montage, the presence 2016 says, "Don't you find it fascinating that as as the events sort of play on on." Fast forward. Don't you find it fascinating that you have to remember who you are and what you are in order to serve the judges? And in doing so, you are punished for remembering. That is very amusing, I think. And it, the presence starts to fast forward the memory and it just, it goes and it goes and uh, it goes to a point where um, you will have gotten one more memory. You remember your guilds now, both of you. And um, as you gain one more memory, please roll as many dice as you have second because that is a, that is a descent roll. And the presence says, let's see how that feels like. And it, it fast forwards you to the point where uh, you're you're being punished for remembering. More. So so we're on memory three now, and we yeah. need, what was it we need to roll? Sorry, it roll your second. Okay. Yep. I don't know that you can do it off the sheet, so you'll have to do it manually. Yeah, I'm just gonna do it manually. Yep. So. Uh, that is very interesting. So Nefer drops one second as a oh, result I've of remembering. I've still got a wound penalty. Oh, oh, hang on. Oh boy. I don't think I. Sh I, I wouldn't have wounds by this point. Would it? It's time. No, I, I don't think so. You, you haven't gotten okay. tagged. I don't. Uh, yeah, you would have healed long ago. Yeah. Okay, that was from you. Yeah. Okay, let's just let's just get rid of that. <laughs> Sorry, I was like, why have I suddenly got like a minus? What have I done? Cursed fate. Oh, okay. Oh. You can roll your sec M, John. You just have to click on it and only that. Okay. And um, Ben Ben drops one sec M as well as a result. So you remember in the first turn, you're you're doing your wanderings uh, sort of down to um, lower Kemet. And uh, eventually you will have talked with people enough. You've uh, talked amongst yourselves about what was going on in Abdu, the ideas that you, um, you heard about in there. And you remember, you remember your guild. So your sort of occupation really. And the fact that you used to belong to this, a guild hall a larger organization of those with similar occupations as yourself. And you also remember your actual name at this point. Now the question is, uh, which is also the question the presence has in 2016, it says, how does that make you feel? As, as you remember the pain in the first turn as your, uh, your second is peeled away by at that point in time, you don't understand how that works. So your second is being ripped out of your 
uh, your body. I think in the future I'll probably say, but at the time I did not know anything different, so it, it did not make me feel anything. I felt a strange sense of loss. But, like, some part of me was being taken from you without permission. But as the ages have rolled on, I, I kind of see it as a, a negotiation, I suppose. The judges infuse us with this righteous energy that we take forward. But as we remember ourselves and can use it for selfish means, they strip it away, balance it out. You cherish the scourge, then? Cherish is not the word I would use. Uh, I see it as a reminder for... Mm, of the, your place. I, I, I do not know the will of the judges, and I, and I would not blaspheme by understanding the way they think. But it stands to reason that if you, if you employ an individual who's going to live forever... You need to be able to keep them from going astray. <laughs> you 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 hear the the chuckle, yeah. and uh, the presence says, "So the leash must be tight, lest you slip it." That is the just position, isn't it? The leash is the loosest when we're at our strongest. I find a when I remember when I'm able to remember, I find that quite amusing, really. Mm. The more I know, the the less I can do. The more I understand why that is. So, <clears throat> let us see what you did, having regained your name. Very significant, though I did doubt you realized it at the time, or even now. And we return to the first turn. And you, um, in your sort of wanderings, like determined not to stay too long in places with a lot of uh, arisen in them, so as to like not make a honeypot <laughs> thing happen. And um, you've sensed something like the arisen uh, a couple times here. Uh, as you travel along the river, it's it's been both times. It's been uh, a sort of river barge or a convoy uh, with the great house uh, heavily present. You haven't really investigated that further, determined to not make unnecessary uh, advances or, or take risks when you don't need to. And to that end, you've taken a sort of side trek into Deshret, into the red land, the wasteland, further away from the river to dodge one of these convoys of the great house. Let's see. <clears throat> so I'll move the token here. So I think we're going to be, we're somewhere in the Deshret uh, to the west of Kamenu. Right here. And... Um, you're sat there with Kazmut and would you have uh, like a fire going? Would you would you have provisions that you eat? Because you can eat and you, you can taste food and all that. I think it probably wouldn't have occurred to to Kufu to to, to take that with him because it, it's just not necessary. So and he's not a great one for like just eating for the pure enjoyment of it and stuff the, like that. So he probably wouldn't so, have. Bothered. Sobek would have taken a little bit of a different tact because he is, he's not, even in his like he's still not fully powered up memory wise. But he he knows enough now. So he would have brought food with him, not necessarily for himself, but like when he meets people and like on a, like around a campfire or traveling, he can share the food and it's like a. Breaking the bread type thing, like right. it's a right. it's a utility you can yeah. use to interact with people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> uh, well, you, you're as you, you don't use it for your own sake, really, Sawback. So, 
you walk uh, walk in the the red land and it is nighttime there is the moon is high in the sky full as can be uh, lighting the dunes ahead of you it's a heavy con- contrast of a clear sky silver moonlight and absolute darkness of the desert and um you're in no hurry you don't need to rest so you can leisurely walk uh, the idea was to disappear here for a time so that if anyone's tracking you they would lose interest and uh, leave so you walk the dark uh, desert when you start hearing uh, sounds of an approaching animal you think from the west so deeper from the deshret and uh Cosmut, as he introduced himself to you, he, he was remarking that he's a, he's a kind of an architect, but also a warrior. So Cosmut has obtained weaponry, so he's, uh, he's ready with a spear as, as uh, the sounds come closer from the darkness, uh, because he, he whispers like, it does not sound like a piece of burden, uh, be ready. I think I'll probably I'll have my hunter's axe out, and I'll probably, obviously, given now that I've got my um, by steps unseen, I'll sort of like draw the draw the lion's jaw axe, and I'll sort of like retreat back into like a sort of patch of shadow, with the basic yeah. idea that if something does attack us, I can use the shadow to like come in from behind. It's it's almost like free reign because it's uh, it's it's not complete darkness because of the moon. Yep. But everything's very dark in here, so basically you can it's it's all shadow now. In comes from the west two creatures on all fours. Um they resemble canines to your eyes. Let me bring up the description. Where did that go? Oh, there we go. Okay. Ugh. Okay. The PDF is fighting me. <laughs> Come on. Okay. Let's, let's do it the long way then. I have experience with Roll20 doing that. No, it's it's my PDF. Oh, it's, oh, it's your actual not, not even Yeah, yeah, it's oh. Adobe. Okay, here we go. Good, okay. So let me zoom in on that. So. Uh, Sorry about this. Sorry. It's... I'm just soaking up the the desert. Yeah, the, the bracing air. Yeah. <laughs> Which, to be fair, is quite a bit cooler now because uh, you're deep in the desert and it's night. So. It's uh, cool. It's... Okay, here we go. Yep. Okay, so. You uh, you take your stances there, uh, just the three of you in the empty desert. There's nothing, nothing to hide behind, really. And um, you sense Sekhem as these creatures approach. Uh, they go on all fours. And uh, there is a glimmer in the eyes of these creatures. And I'll put up a picture. Okay, so as their room... Um... As they're approaching, I want to use um, my steps on scene. I can take an instant action to like hide myself. Uh-huh. Yep. I, get, so, I, get, I basically get like a stealth roll with a bonus equal to my shoot to rating. Uh-huh. Yeah, so you can. You don't even need to roll. You you can 
you can just have that for now. So you um, you cloak yourself in the shadows of the desert. I like I like if this was a film, like the last thing you would see is this like jaw axe thing just disappearing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Teeth just get reflecting in the night. Yeah. Yeah. The um, the the because the the th- teeth that are missing are replaced with like the polished onyx. <laughs> And so the glimmer of the onyx uh, before it disappears. So these creatures uh, look something like this. Uh, I encourage you to click on it because it does enlarge the picture. Well. So um, the creature I'll say one thing is, about this game. The beastry is never boring. The, the size of it is like a very large uh, jackal dog creature, like a lion-sized canine body. It has a face like in the picture and two sort of square-ish ears that just extend from the head. And it's uh, these, these creatures have eyes that glimmer in the moonlight. Uh, you realize it's it's... N- it's not eyes per se that it has. It's something uh, else in there. And um, it has a weird face. That's not a canine face exactly. It's something between a dog and a horse, maybe, but it's neither of those truly. And uh, from the uh, back half of it, uh, the tail uh, sort of, coils around uh, and it is in fact uh, tipped with two scorpion stings, stingers uh, as in the picture. I'm glad you mentioned it because I wasn't going to bring it up. Yeah, yeah like, <laughs> let's leave that, leave that <laughs> to the side. So these these things sort of pad out quite canine-like from, from the deeper in the dash red and you sense Sekhem. They are infused with Sekhem and you've only seen two different things that have Sekem in them, the deathless and the lifeless. The creature, I will remark, that you killed at the docks when Khufu woke up didn't have Sekem in it. Right. The the creature that, that wielded shadows in the necropolis, that one had Sekem in it. These creatures do too. So they sort of slowly, they're not doing like a haunting pincer attack or anything. They're just sort of like pat out towards you though, like beelining towards you. Uh, what do you do? Do they do they appear to be with anybody? Is is like is there another presence I can no, sense? No, it's just like, these two. And I can see them. Yes, very plainly. They're, they're not making an attempt to hide or anything. Okay, it's nighttime, isn't it? Yeah, it's like dead of night, full moon. Okay. Dark desert. Okay. My my plan is basically to remain hidden until they sort of make their move, then to either like come in on the flank or like behind them and sort of take them by surprise. I'm gonna. I'm gonna take a. See, I don't see guys. Anyone watching this? If you know my, sh- if you know my, sh- my, uh, my guy, he doesn't really have a lot of combat options. He's 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 got a lot of sight though. I, I could t- I could tell them what they've eaten in the last few days. Like I I could do some dietary advice. <laughs> oh, if they've been haunted by a ghost recently. Um. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna try and uh, fake it till you make it. So, I guess I've still got my spear, right? Uh, you can have whatever because yeah. you've had time to. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you, you, can, have your you can have anything from between Abdu and Kemenu. There's plenty of opportunities to acquire anything you might have. From I was going to say if we if we can all have acquired a shield each, that might be yes. handy. Yeah. So what yeah. we're talking about here is going to be uh, it's going to be a thing of leather. Uh, yeah, a tower shield. Yeah, it, it's 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 going to be leather and uh, and and reed and and. Not a lot else. Yeah, really. Every little helps. Yep. I don't know where Khufu is. No, uh, so I'm just kind of going to stand up, face them, uh, move slightly away from the fire so it's not blinding my eyes. Like, it's not, you know, I can see a bit clearer. You know, it's more like illuminating their surrounding rather than looking close to it. And I'm just going sp- sp- to speak to them. Yep. What do you say? And, and which just... language do you use? Since I can say sexy, it says second, I'll, I'll use Eremite. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll just say, I don't know what you are, and I don't know if you know what I am. 
and I don't know if you come in peace or to harm me and my friends. But I will offer you this one piece of advice. As I, as I start to draw a line across the sand, <laughs> do not test me. <laughs> so they... I'm, I'm basically trying to intimidate them because mm -hmm. I have a specialization here. Mm -hmm. which I never really get a chance to use where I can stare down someone. Yeah. So I'm going to try well, and make them think you, it's not worth don't... it. You don't need to roll because you will, will you will gain what you seek here uh, without even a roll. So okay, um, I think just like oh, we got a badass. Here. <laughs> this is this is fuck off. He's got full. Okay, Patrick next thing. Stewart. Next thing. The line is so drawn here. That was like forget those two. Like we're yeah. gonna move on. <laughs> no. And I just kind of take up a, a like like I'm gonna throw it. You know, like where I had it kind of ready to go, mm -hmm. shield off, and I'm just prepared. No fear. Yeah. On so the outside. Uh, they like adjust course towards you because you're talking uh, at them and um, they sort of you notice that they're looking at you as you talk like they clearly they're hearing something that you're saying uh, and um, as they uh, reach you uh, it, when I say reach you we're talking like maybe 20 meters out yeah yeah so they're not like up in your grill I haven't invited um, them to fire so they can stay yeah. there yeah, so they they approach so that you can more accurately see them. Uh, and I'm, to be as, honest, I'm actually yeah. more worried if they do start talking. <laughs> yeah, it's like <laughs> that means they're intelligent, that, probably. Because then they're not creatures. Then they're yeah. other Thing. things. The eyes, clearly pieces of lapis lazuli, uh, engraved with something yeah. that shimmers a bit. Um, the the body, um, it looks like like flesh, and uh, Khufu, it looks like people flesh. It looks like dead flesh, and um, but not like rotting at all. It's like in the picture, um, you can you see um, as they move around in in the joints, and once you see the joints, you start to notice. Oh, it it goes further. Um, some of the joints have uh, bits where the pieces of flesh connect and uh, there's gold wiring, uh, sort of gold thread there, which seems to bind the flesh together. It's, it's not like a crude, you know, like a necromancer sewed it up. It's uh, quite uh, well done indeed. Uh, and uh, it, It's sort of like the flesh sort of like almost melds into the the golden threading and, and vice versa. Yeah, cool. cool. Okay, so as I'm sort of in the shadows and I'm I'm seeing a uh, Sobek taking his like dramatic stand like this far and no <laughs> like that, uh, and we'll, we've noticed the wires. Um, with my sort of like knowledge of the occult and like, I'm quite big on the investigation, I'm going to be observing them very closely, and I'm observing them precisely because I'm like if they're held together like there's some sort of constru construct. Mm -hmm. I'm basically trying to observe them to like work out what I think about like, the optimal place to sort of like strike them yeah, when, yeah. if it becomes necessary. Yeah, yeah. So you're you're trying to you're trying to explode the creature in your mind and have yeah. the diagram there. Yeah, because I'm I'm basically sort of like probably using my death sight as well because I've seen mm -hmm. the dead flesh. I'm mm -hmm. sort of like, but I presume I don't get a lot from that because the construct's not like undead. Yeah, uh, they actually let me let me take a glance here. I'm basically in my mind. I'm going like, if I were to build a creature like this, how would I go about it, and what would be the quickest way to like disassemble yeah, it? To, yeah, disassemble the thing. Yeah. So you're puzzling that out, and um, <clears throat> so <clears throat> to continue the the eyes, lapis eyes, um, with something it's like it's not pure. It's something there that that glimmers, that gives the sort of shine that you have in the picture there. The flesh seems to be at least a kufu. Uh, he's because of the mysteries of his guild, he kind of recognizes that's probably dead people flesh. It's threaded together with gold wire in at least some parts that you can see, but it's it's seamless. Uh, it's clearly if this is people flesh, something has done has been done to it because it's it's not like this usually, uh, not this shape anyway. And um, uh, yeah, it, it gets closer and uh, Sabek what you thought was a sort of like bark like texture maybe to the skin is not bark at all it's script 
but the script is so tiny and prevalent that you kind of mistook it for texture on on the skin it is absolutely covered in writing but it's too far away for you to read uh properly just get glimpses of it as the fire like flickers about yeah, yeah you you think like oh that that looks like hide so probably maybe harder to penetrate oh no no it's it's just writing on the skin. Is Kazmut still with us at this stage? Yeah, Kazmut is with you as well. And he's, what, what, he's what's taken that a... villain doing? I mean, no, he's, what's that guy doing? No, he's he started the whole thing by going like, this doesn't sound like Beasts of Burden to me. So, And he's holding his spear to like right, to so keep them away. He's, he's not just sitting around doing nothing. That's good. No, no, no. And he resents your implications. Um, and <laughs> so they, you, you observe all this. And um, uh, the one of them... Uh, sits down uh, in uh, on its hind legs as a dog would do, and um, the other one approaches a little further, and you watch as this creature uh, that you can see in the picture sort of melds together and like rises up from its sort of canine position and uh, becomes a naked human male standing before you uh no traces of the any of the the lapis or the gold wiring or or any any of the writing on the skin it's a naked human kemetic man with a striking mane of red hair and um he says state your business <laughs> he says it's what i'm saying <laughs> See, that is, <laughs> that's that's not your average uh, encounter no, even, even, even <laughs> no, for, uh, no. Even for that is not. <laughs> he, um, he says... In Aramite, of course. That's, that's yeah, he says in Aramite, uh, or it says in Aramite, we do not come with ill intent. Be at peace. You could have came as a man, and that would have been much easier to achieve. The travel across the Red Land is much quicker. First, tell me your name. Once I know your name, I'll decide if your intentions are good or not. We are Shah. You have asked what I am. And the man glances at the, the other one and says, I am Beast of Sutek. Beast of Sutek. Does any of that mean anything to me at all? Sutek is... Uh, you remember it now at memory three, you do recall that Sutek is one of the gods of Iram. Um, that is the nameless serpent god. Shouldn't you be a snake? It, it doesn't react. <laughs> so, you, do you say that to him? It's like, yeah, shouldn't, shouldn't you be a snake? Because <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, like, the reverence really to it, like, mm -hmm. to a certain degree. Yeah. I just Kufu, you have some more context for this. Um, Sutek is the god of the desert and the sandstorm and uh to you the red eye uh, the the red hair stands out as a that's that's one of the markings of uh sort of sutek's touch like the the sort of like oh this person is blessed by sutek because they have red hair because no one else does so I, I think at this point i'm basically going to step out of the shadows like right next to the mm -hmm. this um naked uh, emissary of Sutek and just in a very quiet voice say and what is it that you want with us beast of Sutek uh the the other one the other Shah does the same like just like melds together into a pile that turns into a human uh naked woman with a similarly uh long uh red hair. striking red hair and uh, she says we want nothing except to bring you knowledge we have gifts for you arisen would you receive them I, I, i'll just sort of nod in like well, I part the polite formal fashion of the time since they're they're basically on our emissaries of like um, an Aramite god, I'm like, I'm, I'm like damn, damn right, I'll take them gifts. Yeah, you at least you because uh, you you have the religious context for everything. I'm, so if I'm, if I'm, this is true, fuck it. 
Yeah, bring it I, I relax slightly. Um, mm -hmm. Do these gifts come from you, or have you been sent by something else? We have gifts for you. Greater mysteries to aid you and knowledge. Are you like us? Did you awake recently? Uh, the woman and and the man they repeat in unison. It's like, I am Shah, beast of Sutek, and they incline their heads. Well then, Shah, if you truly mean us no harm, you are welcome here, and I will listen to what wisdom you have, and accept your gifts. If you, if you eat. I have some food with me, if you are hungry. They shake their heads in unison. Very well. I I'm going to be sort of like continuing to observe them now. I'm like a bit closer. But um, mm -hmm. I'm going to, since they've said they're from Sutek, and I'm like, oh, yeah, red hair, that's a mark of like Sutek's favour. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be being like very respectful and sort of formal to them whenever mm -hmm. I speak to them. I'm going to relax my stance, but I'm not going to relinquish my weapon at this stage. Even though it would make no difference, probably it's not me in half like a twig. But <laughs> let's just walk tall. Shall we sit to discuss the gifts that we come with from the desert? Please. Please. And I'll, I'll gesture to like a nearby dune or somewhere where we can like yeah. sit down. So you'll you'll set yourselves down and. Um, the two Shah continue in their human forms. Uh, they don't really seem to... Like, they obviously don't act like people because they are not <laughs> people. Uh, they to, have... to, to be fair, we barely act like people. Yeah, they, you're, you're not really either. Uh, it's You're kind of a caricature of a of a memory of a person at this you're, point. You're anyway. an echo or something. Yeah. Um, I, I will ask them if I can, as we walk over, do you come from a rem? We have come from Deshret, bearing aid. Why are you aiding us? They don't say anything. <laughs> Just kind of nod after a few seconds, like silence. Silence can be an answer in a in a, in a fashion. Yeah, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna sit down on the sort of dune, like facing mm -hmm. them, sort of cross-legged, like the axe across my my legs, so it's within easy reach if I need it. But so I'm not like threatening them with it, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm just gonna wait for them to reveal this knowledge yeah. and whatever gifts they bring. So they sit down with you there, and um, uh, <clears throat> there's gonna be a bit of a montage here. So they they sit down and they start talking. They say. Arisen, for that is what you are, which is where the origin comes from uh, for your title down the line. Arisen, you are truly deathless. The right of return has fixed you in a cycle which is tied to Sopdet. They point out the Sirius in the sky. The Star of Sharpness. Its eye is fixed on you as your souls are fixed to it. The cycle is long, but it shall ever return you to this land. For your purpose, you might seek out servants, create cycles of your own, cycles of service that are quicker than the rising of the sharpest star. You might select wise people, and they use the, the Eremite word for that, which means both human and sacrifice interchangeably it, it's kind of the same thing um, you might choose wise people to act as your 
hands and eyes and mouths in the world. For once the power within you cools and withers into an ember, you will depart these lands. You will pass beyond the twilight. But if you have hands and eyes and mouths in this world, in the form of wise people that you do your, do your bidding, they might call upon you and create a cycle of purpose different from that of Sothis in order for you to act and live again. And they go into, they, they basically give you the, the magical theory and the ritual practice by which you could, if you chose to, you could teach these things to mortals so that they can call, they can summon you with relics from uh, Duat to basically, they teach you how to have a cult that can summon you uh, going forward. So that takes up some time. Let's say that takes up the first day. Um, let's let's have a like a snapshot after the first day. What's your uh, what's your reactions as as the Shah have uh, sort of said that we will have a short pause here for you to ruminate on these uh, these rituals. We we will have more knowledge to impart. But let's say that you're like on the, off to the side of it. Uh, what's your reactions? At this point in time, I, I think mostly I'll be, I'll be sort of pretty quiet and contemplative, sort of thinking over what they've said. But um, I, I'm sort of, I'm sort of waiting to get like whatever the rest of it is that they want to impart to us. So I'll be sort of like thinking in the back of my mind, you know, what sort of people would I choose? You know, what would their sort of purpose be? But uh, I'll be sort of like thinking that to myself. I won't be sort of like verbalizing it. Um, Sobek, on the other hand, will be kind of leaned forward, and like kind of spear sort of leaned against his shoulder. He's forgotten it's even there. He's just taking it in, but he's asking. He's once once given the opportunity, he just starts asking questions. So it's like, so you know, so you, so whatever sent you understands our purpose. I am Shah, beast of Sutak. I, I got that head. the second time. Um, but you, you seem to have no, far more knowledge than we do. How did you get this knowledge? It is for us to grant on to you, Arisen, in this time of the rising of the sharpest star. The brother, they are they have been sent by one of the the gods of the the city of pillars if this rite of return that they speak of was done to fix us to this place while we were in the city of pillars and they were sent by a god from that same city how would we does it not, do something like that does it not make sense they would to, have that knowledge how would we agree to do that why, why would we agree to come to do this this task when we cannot remember? Doesn't does it not seem odd? All I can assume is that we had our reasons, and given that they seem to be suggesting that we will essentially go on for the the span of this world, can you not envision why that might be appealing to us, rather How than? Many? exist for a short space of time we will go on I saw turn back to, the, to these creatures how how many turns will this this go on for how many, how I many think times? the um, the how Shah in will... unison just they uh, they invent the Socratic method <laughs> and uh, and they say what is the length of time oh fuck <laughs> just, that's just like <laughs> in Eremite. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, fuck. <laughs> fuck. 
so I think we, we move on from that uh, with those words. Uh, that's a wonderful cutting off point for that. And uh, um, <laughs> so the Shah will, um, will have you walk. Uh, they will let you know that there, there's a place they want to take you because there is more knowledge to be had from there. But they will impart more knowledge as you walk with them. So you're you're walking I'm to questions. I yeah. all as we go, I am just they are not getting any rest from my constant like just trying to glean information from them. So you're walking in the desert with the Shah um, towards Lower Kemet here. Uh, the Shah are saying that they're taking you to a place uh, called Shedet, which on the map you can I'll see it there. Kemet, up the river. And um, you you walk with them, and they uh, say, uh, that's, this is a conversation that goes on for a bit, but um, they started with Arisen. There is much you can learn from the the city of pillars, the ancient time. We come bearing two utterances for you. What is an utterance? It is the transcendent art that ruled the city of pillars. We come bearing two utterances. I bear one and the, the, the other one also does the same motions, like presses a hand on the chest, like I bear one. We take you to Sheret, for we know that there is a third one there. Afterwards, you might discover more transcendent knowledge, such as these, from discarded pieces of the past. You might travel to where the great house is and their necropolis holds great stone monuments, large graves that they have erected for their kings. Some ancient knowledge can be found in these burial places <clears throat> of the people of the river. They have taken it there from where it originally was under the sands. You might find them in those words of the people of the river who are overcome by your power. They might hear the transcendent knowledge emanating from Duat through you and they might speak it back to you and you would be wise to listen. I will speak the utterance and you will hear. So the first Sha uh, speaks an utterance. Uh, it, it speaks awaken the dead uh, on, on a, a, a dead <laughs> person that you come across. Um, to demonstrate. Uh, so there's a there's a scene where you have a corpse. Uh, it's it's someone who's died from reasons unknown to you. Uh, the first Shah uh, speaks the the cosmic uh, language, the transcendent words of Iramite sorcery that takes the Sekhem in you and. Uh, forces its will onto the world and it raises this corpse up as a uh, as much as Khufu knows in the, in the present times how that works so both of you are free to learn that in modern day now Khufu you already have that this is where you learned it uh, you learned it in this time in the Deshret when the Shah spoke it to you and had it you, you practiced it with, with the Shah uh, in the desert and you learned it Sabek, 
you didn't learn it then, but you could potentially learn it now. You have the justification for it in the modern times because you remember the utterance. Which from... one is it? The one of one of Khufu's one. One of Khufu's raise the dead uh, oh. abilities. So, the, the, one of the Shah knows that one. It teaches uh, it to you. See, I, I, I guess I assume, sorry, that each one mm. of them had one we learned from original character sheets. That's what I'm yes, afraid was that, that's, that's very true. Because the other one uh, right. can teach you uh, the, the words to rebuke those who would use the power of the gods against you, <laughs> which is where there you've learned go. the rebuke the vizier, vizier. Uh, power. So, Kufu, you don't have that in the modern times, but you have the justification for that uh, as well. We could do swapsies. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, you, you could potentially buy those. Uh, but yeah, these Shah um, teach you these utterances very deliberately. They, they're very insistent about it until you get it right. <laughs> and then uh, once you do, uh, they, they lay off I of that. I do ask them afterwards. Mm -hmm. Do you, did you, have you come to teach us these personally, or have do you go to each of arisen and teach them? Are, are there are there creatures like you going to the others arisen we have met the other deathless? There are many Shah beasts of Sutek in Clan Zarin. Right. We come from Deshret bearing knowledge to the arisen. Okay, another question. <laughs> Sha, um, if, if I was cut down tomorrow and I awoke um, at some other point in Deshret, would you return to me to grant me knowledge? Or is this a one-time deal? They don't answer. Huh. These are very interesting beasts, Mr. the Khufu. I like to think as you're saying that you sort of see like Kufu's not really paying attention. He's sort of like going over, sort of like not speaking, but sort of like mouthing to himself, like the the utterance, uh, the awaken the dead utterance. You know, like going over it, making sure he's got it right. He seems to obviously be like very sort of like drawn towards that. So he's sort of like going over it and like, like I say, just sort of almost like miming the sort of gestures and the the words that uh, the first Char said. To, like, trying to lock it in his mind. Um, I will point out that Kuf, uh, blah, 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 Kazmut uh, also learns the rebuke the vizier uh, utterance at this point in time. So that is, you know, now in modern day, that was the first utterance that he learned uh, as well. That would explain a few things. Cheeky little git. Uh, yeah, it's also something that, well, if if you threw a punch. He might be able to yeah. <laughs> yeah. ward it off. So, 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 so what, you, what, you're basically, had... what you're basically saying is that like Kazmut and uh, and uh, Sobek are like quite alike each other. Well, that's Very what I'm hearing. So. Very much so. Maybe that's that's why they don't get on with each other so well. You know, like if opposites attract, then it takes one to know one. You know just saying? keep butting mm -hmm. butt heads. You know. Yeah. 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 So I, they. I, I'm done with question. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No. I, I'll be like. <laughs> Okay, Sha, will, will, will we meet again? Can we you tell will, me this? We will take you to Shedet. There is a ruin there that has ancient knowledge. The transcendent knowledge of the city of pillars. Are you not able to tell me something you're not meant to tell me? Is that, is that it? I am Shad Beast of Sutek. <laughs> yes. I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> Endlessly curious. I will, obviously, I will head to Sh 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 mm -hmm. Shedet. <laughs> so you go to Shedet, which is uh, a... Let me pull up my notes here. Uh, okay. Do, 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 do. Okay, Shedat, it, Shedat. It. Uh, so, uh, Shedat is a city in a depression feeding directly into the river, as you can see from the map there. Mm -hmm. It's sort of in the 
the area that gets the water when it comes time for the flood. <clears throat> and um, there's buildings located on a series of sort of islands that stick out even when the flood is in. And um, you come to learn very quickly that the, the main focal point of this area is a large temple uh, structure which when I say structure, it's not just the, the one building. There's courtyards, there's smaller shrines and, and devotional structures, which is dedicated to uh, Sobek, the uh, god of crocodiles and, and the Nile in that aspect. So um, these anthropomorphic uh, crocodile-headed figures, very prominently displayed on the temple walls, on the Every surface is is covered with devotional um, inscriptions and and invocations to Sobek, and um, uh, there's uh, quite a strong presence of the priesthood there, and uh, a lot of crocodiles <laughs> as well. And um, are they expecting us? Oh, the, who the the temple? The priest people, yeah. Do they no. seem to? No. Okay. So. The, the Shah lead you to a crumbling bit of stonework which has Iramite writing on it. Quite faint, almost faded out entirely. Um, but it's still there, traceable. But you kind of have to trace it by hand almost because it's so faint. Are we, I um, say to them, are we, in the, is this, are we in the ruins of the City of Pillars here? This is a... Um, no, they say this is Shedat the city of the crocodile. How did this get here? This is ain't this it is, is a ruin of the nameless empire. There are many like it. For the empire was vast. Did, did it cover the entire land? Wh wherever we are? Is it everywhere? It, it, they don't answer. I, say, I turn back to Kazma actually. I say, I think mm -hmm. the deal, I think, Kaz, uh, our Kaz, um, that uh, <laughs> these things will answer if you ask the right question. The question is the key. The knowledge, they, they grant you knowledge, but you have to know the question. I, I think while Sobek sort of like questioning the, um, the show, I'm going to be sort of like tracing over this this eremite writing on the crumbling stone they said that there was sort of like ancient knowledge here it's an eremite obviously we speak eremite but you say it's very faded yep. but i'm going to be sort of like tracing it over with like my finger sort of trying to make out the words and what it says there mm -hmm. i'm going to approach one of these Sha, and i'm going to hold out my relic mm -hmm. do you know what this is uh the shah nods and says this is a, a relic of the craft of the city of pillars you might use this relic uh, and bestow it upon those who have who you have chosen to be your hands and eyes and mouths in this world and they can use it to recall you from beyond the twilight huh Right, so in in Shedet, you um, you uh, trace your hand uh, over the uh, the inscriptions. You take your time studying it. Yeah. You're left well enough alone, um, and um, you will have the opportunity to learn uh, the utterance uh, "Kiss of Apep." which both of you can just put that in your notes. You can have that in the, the modern day. You remember that now. Both of you learned it here. So are we just going to be like adding that onto a sheet? Yeah, you, can, the just, opportunity to you can just plop on there okay, uh, cool. when when we do the, the modern oh, timeline. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't quite hear you then. It was... Kiss of Apep. Of the serpent. Okay. That sounds like one I'm going to enjoy. <laughs> I need to find the book, don't I? Get the book open. It's going to be a... Yeah, but you, you learned that there uh, at Shedet. And then um, 
uh, what's our timeline here? Where uh, how how long do you have? I, I'm I'm pretty much good for uh, another like so 25 minutes. Oh, half, minutes. Yeah, I was gonna say about half ten. Okay, my, so uh... I've got some stuff here, which uh, we could just have me narrate it. There's parts of it which I would have narrated anyway, but okay. there's parts of which we might have sort of like stepped aside and maybe talked a little bit about. But um, if we want to have the first turn sort of wrap up here, okay. it's very viable. And um, I can uh, just talk us through the sort of important points that I have. Yeah, I've got to admit, I think I think now would be a good time and then to sort of like jump back to like mm -hmm. modern day. Yeah. So, yeah, let's. Uh, I will sort of take us into the ending montage of the first turn, and I will actually wait for uh, Kufu to get back because he has departed his mortal flesh and uh, traveled to lands unknown. Are we reading up on Kiss of Ape? Um, I'm looking through my, my actual sheet, my original sheet. Hmm. Recalling your glories. Uh, yeah, the so this is one that we can learn in modern day. You can have it in the have it. Day. Oh, have it. You okay. can have it. Yeah. Oh. I have to find the book. There we go. Cool. Don't suppose you've got the page number. Uh, one two two. Two two. Wait, cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, Ren. King. Yeah, at least you can use tier, tier one. Oh, man. <laughs> T3 is an absolute. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, John's going to love that. Okay. I think John's good for uh, tiers one and two, but uh, I don't think tier three is. He's like, closer is gonna... than I am. I'm going to yeah, get. It's, it's going to be eventually there, but. But yeah, we, we can study the mysteries of the case of Apep uh, a little bit later because I will now uh, talk a little bit about uh, what goes on in the rest of your first turn. Now, we can revisit parts of the first turn later, of course. Um, it wasn't just these events that we've played through and what I will talk about now. It's also other stuff. But So let's see, we, we were in the the ruins at Sheret, and you, you learn the kiss of Apep in the ruins. And uh, eventually, uh, Khufu's cautions proved to be right, because you are ambushed at Sheret uh, by none other than Mesedikere, who uh, you now realize was also the figure that you fought in the necropolis, Khufu. So Mesedikere and uh, mortal cultists ambush you in uh, in Shedet. And it is uh, a sort of display of supremacy and, and his cruelty just kind of playing with you because he is terrifyingly powerful um, just infused with Sakem, uh, his sort of dark silken clothes just flapping around as in the night air because he is also very proficient in the use of shadows and half light. That, that's all right, man. L last time he messed with me, I couldn't move in the shadows myself or road zombies. Yep. <laughs> so there's a bit more of a fight this time. However, he's got way too many cultists. Um, as um, as Mesedikera is toying with you, Kufu, especially Sabek, you get to deal with most of the like royal spearmen. Um, Mesedikera seems to be more interested in in Kufu. So this uh, figure clad in uh, dark, flowing fabrics is a is a sort of blur uh, <clears throat> in the night at at the ruins as it's toying with Kufu. Kufu is putting up a resistance because you you have more ability to do that now. And um, you you, uh, you get taunted by Mesedikera there. And uh, one of the main points is, which you recall now, um, 
is that uh, Mesa de Carrier taunts you about the fact that he let you go. All he did was follow you to the south because he couldn't put a put a finger on him in the necropolis. So he just followed you to where you were going. And uh, you took him to a necropolis in the south where several other arisen were still sleeping. So he killed you in the desert because it wasn't no it, it wasn't hard for him. So he killed you in the desert and then just went into the necropolis and ate some of the arisen there. Uh, and he wants you to know that, that you led him there. He, he's very delighted about that fact. And um... I, I like to think I'll probably just like be fairly deadpan in response to these taunts because mm. I'm not exactly one given to outbursts of emotion. Yep. And I'm like, well, I don't remember it. It's not like there was anything I could do, so I don't see the point in feeling yeah. annoyed or ashamed about it. Yeah, he, he's just cackling with glee about the fact that you took him to other Arisen and he destroyed them. Now he's going to play with you for some more. Um, so you die, <laughs> both of you, as Shedev, mm -hmm. uh, at the hands of the cult and Messi de Kere, uh, and uh, you die for the first time since you died. You die again. Uh, well, well, well te technically, the second time for me. <laughs> yeah, technically, but you're 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 a bit hazy there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's all, it's all a bit of a blank. <laughs> yeah. Thank, thank goodness. <clears throat> so you arise uh, in the twilight, as you do when you die. This is a death cycle. You will resurrect again, uh, but you you go through this. So you're in the twilight, which is this dark realm uh, beyond uh, the sort of border separating that from the, uh, the world of the living. It's hard to put it into like ancient mind context, but it's, it's kind of a state of being as well as a place, uh, the twilight. So you're in this darkness, there's a river and there's the smell of blood because the river is one of blood. And you set out into the darkness because you know somehow instinctually that's where you're supposed to go. And you come upon a roaring tempest sandstorm in the darkness. It's hard enough to start scouring the skin from you as you walk into it. But you know that you need to. You need to pass by somehow. And eventually you, you make it to the other side of the sandstorm, uh, bleeding from just the sheer abrasion of the, the force of the gale wind. And um, on the other side, uh, you stumble forward, uh, hurting, and um, there is a figure that strides out very deliberately and slowly from the darkness that approaches you. I'll put up a picture there. This is one that um, Sobek will remember. Is it the doggy? So it's an anthropomorphic creature, uh, large, sort of uh, three times as tall as a person uh, with a um, a jackal head. It strides out from the darkness and you know, especially Khufu, you know that this is a god of the Nameless Empire. This is Anpu, the opener of the way, the guardian of Neterkertet. This is the prince of the space in between. Uh, you are intimately familiar with, with what this creature is. And there is no sort of, there's no obfuscation here. This is the God itself uh, that you, you meet. And uh, Anpu uh, extends a hand uh, from which uh, you can reach, if you so choose, to take a torch each. 
So you can take take these uh, sort of classic, you know, stick with a burning uh, wrap at the end, torches, and uh, Anpu waves one clawed hand uh, further into the darkness as if motioning to you like this way. And uh, Anpu strides in the darkness be beside you as you walk forward with these torches. Is a strange question. Can we can we see each other? Yes. Yes. Is Kazma with us? I, I, I thought for uh, a minute yes, he, he died too. He died too. Sorry, I, I thought I for keep a minute forgetting to mention him. I thought for a minute there, so but you were going to be like, I've just got a few questions for you, Ampu. <laughs> it's like before we proceed, like, uh, <laughs> can I can I take your your interview? I think there's something about this thing that just makes me a bit awestruck. Oh yes, it is a god. <laughs> I, I was going to say, might it be the fact that it's, it's a god? <laughs> it is one that you remember, uh, Sabek. You you're not as up on the uh, the details, uh, but Kufu is, <laughs> and uh, but I both of you remember. It. When I died in Rome, this is what yes. I met when. I... Yes, this is the same the giant thing. dog. Uh, yeah, it it manifests in different ways. Kufu knows all about this. Um, the the large jackal creature is one of the manifestations. This is the most sort of prevalent one. The the man with the jackal head. So it strides in the darkness, sort of like half shadowed, and you walk with the torches. But it, you you always sense the presence. It's right there, and when you watch in the darkness, there's the like baleful, stark, burning red eyes staring from the darkness at you, and. Um, you um, you come upon a scene, sort of like a spotlight shining from on above. Uh, there's no light there that should shine, but it is uh, because this place works with a different logic. So there's this lit scene of um, what seems to be like a scholarly hall almost. And there's records of all kinds. A lot of them uh, clay tablets. And you can see yourselves in there, uh, Khufu and Sabek you see yourselves when you were alive. You're in this hall of some kind, um, and uh, you witness sort of like snippets of conversation and you infer the, the meaning and the context here. The scene that you're witnessing is, is a memory of your living days. And it is one where Khufu, is in the sort of one of the repositories of of records for the uh, the Sumenet, the guild of 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 servants of the gods, the priests. And Sobek, you have come to the hall of records, which Khufu operates, and you have come bearing an order, a divine decree from. Uh, one of the priests of Duat, one of the Shaniatu, who were the guild masters of, of your living days. These divine uh, rulers of uh, ancient Iram. You come bearing a, a decree which says that all records of people of this particular tribe must be destroyed monuments that mention them must have their name erased records in various halls of knowledge must be destroyed and purged every memory of this particular tribe must be wiped out and kufu so sabek you you come to the hall with this decree which neither of you has any intention to uh, disobey whether or not you like it uh, but you know that you can't because it comes from the priests of Duas, Shaniatu. To defy that is to blaspheme against Azar, and that is not something you do in Iram. <laughs> so, Kufu, you remember destroying dozens upon dozens of clay tablets that pertain to like the life stories that you have ascribed of these this particular tribe, uh, the sort of stories that you have, the the death announcements and of their chieftains and, and nobles and that kind of thing you destroy these tablets by the dozen how does that feel 
in the moment, in the memory, or in witnessing it? Is that something that Khufu would regret now? Is there, I, is, is there I, like I think, memories? I think it is definitely something he would regret because, as we know from when we've sort of seen him in the future and stuff like that, he, he's all about sort of like preserving people's deeds and sort of like trying to create a sort of monument. So I think although he wasn't capable of disobeying or sort of not following the orders, I think he would have really regretted that because he, he wants to be a preserver of knowledge. So mm -hmm. di like actively destroying and sort of obfuscating knowledge would be like really sort of against his core character. Yeah. So there's a, there's a melancholy that wafts across the both of you uh, from this memory. Uh, now, Sabek, how did you feel about bringing the order over uh, to the, the Sioux Menons? So am I talking from the perspective of the present day thinking back? Well, uh, and in the moment as well. Like, how did Sobek feel when he was alive bringing the order to the hall? So... I'll do it three in three parts, right? In the 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 memory of me in the moment doing mm -hmm. that of the actual event, I felt a sense of purpose, um, confusion. Well, this I, this I, this was I was I was told to do this. Mm -hmm. This is I cannot disobey. Then that, there was a kind of sense that this must be done. Mm -hmm. The confusion as to the why. And you were explained why. Perhaps uh, you were uh, interested enough to actually ask. You were told have, regardless. If I could have asked, yes, without yeah. without, without getting in trouble with no, the... Uh... No, you, you wouldn't have interacted with one of the Shaniatu personally, necessarily. You would yeah. have interacted with your uh, mortal associates. So uh, you, the reason is they offended the Shaniatu who gave the order. So they, they offended one of the Sesha Hebsu Shaniatu guildmasters. So the entire this entire group of people would, or or like their leader or some someone from the tribe, offended the Shaniatu in question. How much was destroyed? Like a pe like an entire group of people? Yeah, yeah. In, entire tribe. You you don't exactly recall, but you it's a very good guess that they were probably all killed. Um, probably well. they sent the, the soldiers there uh, and uh, everyone got killed. <laughs> so the, me me witnessing it on the end of the first turn mm -hmm. would be, I, I don't really remember much. Yeah, you, you don't, nah. <laughs> but in the modern day, yeah. that, that's that's what you infer. So those people probably all died. <laughs> yeah, I'd be, I'd be talking to the presence really. Like, mm -hmm. you know, to be, it's, it's one, it is interesting to be, so sure of oneself in, in a moment to to follow orders without question and to find that a flicker of doubt there after all this time is this what you wanted me to see is this the thing we forgot this people from from our home this is part of it this is part of the work did they are some of them like did some of them become arisen some of them still out there with <laughs> no. us. No, the there's there's amusement and derision from the from the presence and says, no, these wretches would have been consigned to. Well, there are places deeper than Duat. Oh. You will not see there them again. Well, we had. I recall the the architects, maker of amulets, the. Scribes, the record keepers like Khufu, myself, and the blasted alchemists. <laughs> Those fucking pricks. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, were these something else? Were they a, another? These are but chaff in the wind before the will of the lords of Iran. Was there a sixth pillar? They are. insignificant they are sacrifices to the altar their significance lies in the fact that they were destroyed but every the... name is significant so their name does bear some uh you sense uh 
amusement tinged with a lot of sort of, oh. <laughs> I struggle to put words to it, but there's a sort of like, <laughs> like an amused uh, uh, chuckle and then, then a sort of like, look at you. <laughs> Was he surprised? It's almost like surprise. A, a bit I'm, of a surprise there. Yeah, yeah like maybe. I'm putting something together, even though I don't really understand mm. what it is. Mm. I'm like, I'm reaching out to something. As I keep doing, like over time, I keep uh, reaching out for the info. For I, I'll tell you what, though. I mean, now now that we're going to have remembered this, if only we knew someone who could like recall ancient texts from like that have been long lost to uh, human. If only knowledge. we knew. Yeah. If, if only we had that could power to like pull them back. If only we knew. I actually do that. Could I? Well, though? well maybe Should... in, we'll see in about 4,000 years. <laughs> the question is, Jug, should I? <laughs> That's the question. Yeah, That's yeah, a, question. actually opening a Pandora's box by doing that. Well, we don't we don't truck with opening boxes. Yeah, we, we've already literally opened Pandora's box. <laughs> so, like, I don't think we can get much worse. So, you, you're left with, like, this, literally this motion, Matthew, that you're doing. You're left with this. I'm thinking kind of like, and, so, uh, so I, this is the, to the present. So this relic that you have shown us before, I there yes. was a time that I knew its name. Yes. And there was a time that my friend, my brother Khufu knew its name. Yes. If somehow its, its record was destroyed somehow, would that remove my ability to know it? Am I bound by a rem's knowledge just like I am by my my lifespan to return? You have scraps of wisdom and you grasp for more, but your reach is not long enough. Never which is. is the purpose of why we are doing this. We will see. There is perhaps a chance to elongate your arm. And uh, the, the memory progresses. Um, so you you walk through the sort of apparition scene where Khufu, like regrettably, is just like there's a like a wooden mallet in your hand. He's like bang, like clay tablets, and um, and it's like because you wrote several of these yourself. <laughs> it's like it's it's not good. Uh, you proceed though, and uh, Anpu walks with you the whole way, and there's mirages, more like scenes playing out. You don't know exactly if that's in the twilight or just in your mind at the time, but you're shown this this um, figure uh, with uh, you see uh, a person's features partially clad in this this soft dark fabric that you come to associate with Mesa de Kera. You see that there's a person. It's a man, <clears throat> a sort of slight man of like insignificant build. It looks kind of malnourished actually. And he has some horrendous damage um, hidden underneath his sort of flowing, uh, sort of spacious uh, clothing that he wears. Uh, you, you think maybe his jaw is dislocated and perhaps shattered as well. And uh, there's just like lacerations on his uh, skin and, and abrasions and bruises of all kinds, but most of it is actually quite well covered up by the, the fabrics that he wears. So he is in an opulent hall. He is receiving an audience from people that you, you remember, it springs to mind as you see how they dress. These are people from a place that you would call uh, Kien Gir. I'll put that in the chat. It is a land that you remember from Irem's days as well. It was there in their words, in their language, which is the what this name is as well. It is the land of civilized kings. It was a neighbor of sorts to Irem. Of course, it, there's there's no competing with Irem. But if you wanted to make the poor comparison of competition. The, the land of civilized kings would have been the one, but truly, you know that there's no there's no competing with Iram. You had the true gods on your side, so. But you know that these people are coming from the east a little bit, from where Kemet is, uh, by the way that they dress and how they wear their hair, their 
sort of jewelry and decoration. One of these is clearly a sorcerer um, who is negotiating with Messi de Kera somehow. And uh, in an act of like obeisance, uh, apparently they're paying tribute maybe, you think from the scene. Uh, a couple of these uh, Kiangir uh, merchants bring forth a chest, modest sized chest of stone uh, on the lid of which is engraved though quite faded but still you can see that there's an engraved uh scorpion uh, on the on the lid of this stone chest and um the mirage fades you continue walking across the the sands of of the twilight with anpu striding there's another mirage where uh, Mesa di Kera is shown uh using some kind of relic you are unable to see in the mirage. You, you're, you can't perceive what's going on with his hand, but he is using some kind of relic and there are soldiers clad in the, uh, the way of soldiers from Waset, the, the city of Rames in the uh, upper Kemet. He's using the relic and these corpses sort of twitch back to life. Uh, they stop bleeding. They struggle back up and uh, Messi di Kera holds this uh, relic up high and the, uh, the freshly revivified corpses of these Waset soldiers sort of bow and, and lay their weapons uh, down on the ground. You, you get the second mirage is uh, a sort of impressionistic almost of like these these Waset soldiers that you saw. They're no longer clad like soldiers. They're more a little bit more like nobles now, uh, clad in finery and whatnot. And they are shown with their fists in the air, these men and women. Um, and uh, from these fists come threads apparently made of blood. Uh, and these threads wrap around countless other bodies uh, like going into the horizon behind these central figures and the threads when they have wrapped around the body they pierce it where the heart is and continue on behind that uh, corpse to the next corpse and uh, Anpu waves a hand at the mirage and it is replaced with another one the stone chest is there as if on the sands of the twilight itself, like before you in, in the twilight as you walk. But you know that it's not because it's a mirage. And uh, Anpu waves uh, his other hand across this mirage and the sandstorm that you pass through is summoned here and it swallows the, the chest and uh, it, it is disappeared. And uh, the mirage ends. And Anpu looks at you uh, meaningfully, the blazing red eyes staring from the darkness. And uh, starts leading you further to the west, where eventually you will reach uh, what is known as Aket. It's a sort of, it's a spirit gate almost to, um, that's a rude way of putting it, but it is a point of exit from the twilight into your uh, your resurrection. And you resurrect. Uh, we're running through this now so that we don't run over time too much. So you resurrect in, uh, to your surprise perhaps, back in Shedet. You struggle a bit, you're in the water. That's not weird because it's a very wet place. But you are in fact in the holy uh, pool slash sort of enclosure of the holy crocodile of the temple. There's a large uh, albino crocodile in the this enclosure, which has figured out that there's something in the water with it, and it's coming over quite slowly and deliberately, just like this massive uh, white crocodile. And um, you come to your senses quickly enough, the three of you, Cosmos being there as well, uh, and uh, you depart, you leave uh, as quickly as possible with no no hurry there. But clearly, uh, Messi de Kera has left you for dead, uh, maybe to be eaten by the crocodile for 
whatever dark amusement he can derive from that. But you depart. And uh, there's there's fractures in your memory at this point. And there's there's one thing that is very clear now. And you sense that the presence is actually, it's sort of like pushing you towards this thing that is broken, but it's also putting the pieces back together somehow. And uh, you don't recall the battle and you find yourselves in the aftermath of a battle that you know you fought against Messe di Kere. And um, this is the first instance that you recall the Heartless, which is what these uh, creatures are that Messe di Kere rose up from the, the dead with the relic. You fought, you recall this, but not what happened. Uh, you fought Messe di Kere. You sort of drove him away. You destroyed some of these Heartless creatures uh, quite a lot of them, actually. And um, you pick up yourself. Your, your memory becomes uh, solid enough that you remember when you're sort of like recovering from the carnage. Uh, so it's it's a killing grounds uh, somewhere in a city you don't remember the name of. Um, you've destroyed buildings. Uh, there's people, just regular people are dead. There's the remnants of the heartless. And... Um, you are there, Cosmo is there, and most important of all, you have recovered the stone chest with the scorpion etched on it, inside of which is a relic, the name of which you cannot recall. You, at this point in time, you don't know exactly where this is on the timeline, but you know, you remember knowing at this point in time that this relic is a horrifying thing and you've sort of put a lot of effort to get to this place, you somehow managed to ambush Messe di Kere and get the relic from him and kill some of these heartless. But it cost you a lot. It, you've expended a lot of yourself. And you know that you need to act quickly because Messe di Kere, you only pushed him away. He will come back looking for the relic. You're quite sure of this. So you've hatched a plan. And the plan is as follows. Cosmot is the strongest warrior amongst you. Uh, he has become quite the warrior indeed as he has recovered more of his memory and he has learned more of his affinities. You've determined that because the two of you have expended yourselves in the effort to get this, that Cosmot will carry it to the furthest shore away from Kemet so that Messe di Kere or anyone else can ever use it again. You have seen what these heartless can do and you, you think it abhorrent. You think it's a blasphemy uh, to everything, just existence in general, like to Sekhem itself. You think the lifeless creatures known as the heartless are, are a blasphemy of the highest order created by an even larger blasphemy, which is safely locked in the stone chest. Cosmo departs on what the Kemet people would call a Biblos ship, which because they don't really have ocean-going vessels, but they do have some trade with some of the other sort of shore uh, cities. So he departs to the north with one of these ships, trading ships, carrying away the stone chest with the relic inside. And you have hatched a plan with Cosmot that he will take it as far as he can to the furthest shore and he will hide it there and you will remain here, do what you can to combat uh, Messe di Kere and whatever Heartless remain. You know that the Heartless can propagate on their own, which you find worrying, but you can only deal with uh, so many problems at a time. You have hatched a plan where you will, because the Shah, which by now have crumbled to their component parts. Dead human flesh, gold wire, lapis lazuli eyes. You, As you have seen, one of these Shah companions of yours just break apart uh, when the second runs out. There's a scroll of writing uh, that was in their throat, which also just crumbles as, as the Shah does. Um, the Shah have told you that 
as you go through the ages, it will take a toll on you and it will exact the price of your memories, your, your identity as you die. Using this knowledge that you have learned from the Shah, you hatch this plan where you, you plan to die enough that you forget this relic ever existed. Kazimut will do the same once he's taken the relic as far as he can take it. The idea that he goes alone being because then only one person knows where the relic is and that's better than three. And you know how to destroy your own memories. Khufu knows even better ways of destroying your memory because you have the relic that you can just erode yourself with the relic. That's easy for you. But you know that you can erode your memory if you die. And that's what you've planned. That's what you've made a compact with, the three of you. You will hide the relic, destroy your memories that it ever existed, and then it, it will be safer. You, you, you've committed to this course of action. Cosmo departs. You don't see him ever again during the first turn. And uh, I think that's probably where we uh, end the uh, the flashback there. As as you're left in this, there's a shore that you watch the ship go, and uh, you're you're feeling tired. You're feeling old as your Sekem ebbs, and uh, you've fought. Your pillars are at a low because you've just used all your magic that you can, and you're you're there. Uh, watching Cosmo depart, feeling that you're probably about to experience for the first time what it's like to actually die now and descend uh, when, you, when your Sekem ebbs low. Any last words in the before we cut off? I, I like to think at this point as sort of in the present as we're recalling this. Yeah. yeah. And um, obviously Sobek's been asking sort of like about Oh, is this is this the relic? You know, the one we forgot. Yeah. I'm just gonna like look across at him and I'll say, "Well, that explains a lot." <laughs> and I guess that's that's where that and oh, the last word is with the presence. It's like, yes, this is what I brought you here for. This is what I needed you to remember. But this is not why you cannot remember the relic. You dying doesn't replace the relic in your memories with emptiness. It eats the memory itself, which you can recover. That is what we are doing. I need you to remember the relic. I need you to remember what you did. This is how it started. And I guess that's where we... Uh, we're all credits for this time. Excellent. Thank you very much. I very much enjoyed that session. Thank you very yeah. much. Very thanks cool. for playing again. A lot of information. Th thanks yeah. for indulging my <laughs> massive <laughs> info dump, which I this entirely good, was. I recognize that. <laughs> no, it's all good, man. It's nice to get. Yeah. It's nice to get a bit of a few of the gaps sort of filled in. First but, turn yeah. exposition. Yeah, so. yeah. But next time we'll be back in 2016, and uh, we'll, we'll see what happens then. I'm back, back in 2016, where I'm a mask wearing demon king. <laughs> How we change? <laughs> How we change? I, I've I've gone from being to like, oh yes, I'm I'm a, I'm a calm sort of diligent priest to like the modern day where I'm like, okay, so I've I've created a race of uh, vampires, which are apparently led by like the, the vampire form my wife, who's like a demon queen. Whose face I'm wearing on a wooden carved mask. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's fair to say things have changed a little bit since <laughs> the older, the older ancient empire days. <laughs> We've come a long way. That's it. Yeah. Right. Well, Good times. Thank you very much for running that. Very much enjoyed it as always. Also, I'm happy to chat for a bit afterwards, but I will yep. end the stream here.